Let's go back to our top breaking news story this hour. Dominic Strauss-Kahn has resigned as managing director of the International Monetary Fund. For some analysis now, let's uh, cross over to Hans Gutti. He's a chief investment officer at Finaport Investment Intelligence. He now joins me live from Singapore. Hans, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. I, I suppose this news doesn't come as a huge surprise. No, this news does not come as a surprise at all. In fact, uh, it's a very sensible decision. Uh, the IMF uh, has its hands full with uh, dealing pro with problems. The fiscal debt crisis in Southern Europe, uh, restructure, pos possible restructuring of uh, Greek debt and so on. So I think as an institution, um, it's, it's the right thing to do, basically. And I think as an institution, the IMF, of course, will continue. Uh, Dominic Strauss-Kahn was, was an influential player, but I think given the circumstances, to, the decision to resign was the right one. And Hans, you're obviously based in Singapore, so you've heard all the voices crying out for the next IMF chief to be, to be sort of grounded in emerging markets, to come from emerging markets. Uh, do, do you support that view? Well, I think they should uh, pick the best or most suitable person for the job, no matter where he or she is coming from. Uh, Christine Lagarde obviously has a, a good chance, but uh, at the same time, the IMF has basically been under French leadership for the last 30 years, and maybe a uh, new perspective, maybe some, something a bit more towards emerging markets might be welcome. But I think at the end of the day, uh, the, the best and the, the most suitable candidate should be chosen. Hands on matters closer to, well, certainly closer to us, uh, the U.S. We had the minutes from the Fed meeting last night. And the, the, the view seems to be that what they'll stop doing is reinvesting, uh, dividend, reinvesting principal payments and then move on to other matters such as raising interest rates and selling assets. But the big question is what happens now that QE, QE2 is almost over? Well, that is the big question that nobody can answer. And uh, I would think even the Fed doesn't really know exactly what's going to happen. I mean, what we've had was an economy that has been slowing down as of late. Uh, you see it in retail sales numbers. Uh, you see it in uh, the slowdown in GDP. You see it even in the slowdown in uh, corporate earnings growth, although corporate earnings are still pretty healthy, but the growth rate has started to slow down. And at the same time, uh, there are fiscal headwinds, uh, deficit cuts at the state and local level, obviously, and uh, possible spending cuts at the federal level, and, and the whole uh, complex of the extension of the debt ceiling plays into this. So uh, there's a lot of uncertainties out there, and we would imagine that if, let's say, the 10-year bond goes again below three, that would raise the alarm bells at the Fed because they could make the argument that uh, deflation is back and then, and then they may come up with some further liquidity injections. But I think they just want to see what's happening now over the next few months and, and take a decision after that. Hans, very quickly, I mean, you've highlighted the correlation between QE and rising equity prices. Uh, does that break down now? Do we avoid equities? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, uh, when QE1 ended, uh, the, the Fed's balance sheet was actually uh, contracted by about 12%. And it, interestingly enough, the S&P 500 went down about 12% between April 2010 and August. Uh, this time around, uh, the talk is that the size of the balance sheet remains intact because maturing uh, proceeds will be reinvested and we may not exactly have the same effect. So the, the Fed is not... Uh, really dra uh, draining liquidity from the system. So maybe equities will uh, be a bit more stable, but I think there will be a, a, a move towards uh, risk off, probably a dollar rally and a rally in uh, US Treasuries rather than equities. Hans, thanks. Hans Gutti there from Finaport Investment Intelligence speaking to My us pleasure. live from Singapore.